Hey, what is shaking bacon back here with book club 17 before we get into this make sure you smack that subscribe button I mean smack it like whack it If your monitor breaks this channel is not subject to any lawsuits or anything like that <laughs> Leave a like on the video subscribe all the jazz. We're in trout magic chapter 6 reading fly fishermen the world's biggest snobs and so so true, am I right? <laughs> Anyways, talks about in this book our author, good old Robert Traver, speaking on behalf of fly fishing snobs and how he himself, he considers himself to be quite the snob uh, in that he kind of explains some of the stuff that he does, like he no longer fishes for browns and rainbows. He solely only fishes for native brook trout. And if he finds out that they stock those waters, he no longer fishes them. He's a diehard purist, only goes after the natives. He uses long leaders, 12 foot leaders, with super light tippet. He uses like six, seven X. He said he would use eight X if, you know, he could actually tie his hook through the fly. Although the funny thing is, is that he actually in here has a confession to make and he goes, this brings me to my final shameful confession, one which I know I've simply got to make, but have cravenly kept putting off. Maybe it would help if I led into it gently. This thing I'm driving at is this. Snobbish as I know my fishing has gotten, I am aware that there are still other fishermen who have got me beat. And that's specifically because of two reasons that he points out in this book. And the first one being that he doesn't, only fish dry flies he's no a river runs through it he's no dry fly snob uh, he uh, occasionally throws the nymph on there or a streamer he likes to catch the old fish um, it's funny he actually recollects a story of his younger years where he was he was fishing a river, local river and he you know he was younger he didn't really know what was going on he uh was fishing these big streamers and he slapped the streamer down in and he missed this big brown and he went and sat on the bank kind of resting the pool and as he's as he's watching this uh this old man walks upstream uh, and he's very old he's barely walk uh he's having a little trouble waiting and you know Robert is super worried that this guy is gonna like fall over and he's gonna drown like I mean that's not funny but like he's old he's shaky like he doesn't know what's going on and uh, so he watches the guy fish upstream and he methodically covers all the water and he gets to the pool that Robert had just fished and you know he's he's flo he casts away he throws a nice delicate beautiful cast you know Robert's taken away by this casting stroke and he throws, he lands his dry on the water and the brown comes up, eats it, uh, and he lands it, a nice looking brown, and then he releases it back into the water, which is the first time that the author had really kind of been exposed to catch and release fishing. At least that's how it sounds based on how he, how he words the story. But, and then he like jump, he like taught, he like says something to the old man, the old man is already, already having trouble waiting. He like, water seeps in his waders um, and then he suggests that potentially he should go downstream since he's so old and you know uh, potentially safer for him to go downstream and and he gets all the old man gets all like broad shoulders and uh, see if I can find it here real quick he says this he says look mister I shouted emboldened by this warm show of fishing camaraderie wouldn't it be much safer and easier if you turned around and fished downstream? And says, this really shook him. And then he replied, young fellow, he quavered in a high falsetto voice, fairly dripping with scorn. I'd sooner be over on the Ironton ferry dock, setting my ass, setting on my ass, plucking for bass, than ever fish a wet fly downstream. Just that pure dry fly purist in him. I'm not going to throw a nymph. I'm not going to do a downstream drift with a wet fly. I'm a dry fly guy. That's what I'm sticking to it. The pure snobbishness um, that some of us can be in. And I laugh because there is still people that do this. And uh, 
you know, sometimes I can be a snob myself, maybe not with dry flies, but with like a like urine nymphing. Um, you know, I personally consider urine nymphing to be a far superior method to indicator nymphing. While I do understand that indicator suspension nymphing has its, has its time, its place, uh, and I have let up on this a lot in recent years, but uh, I was quite a euro snob back when I was first doing it uh, and whatnot, kind of thinking all other methods were, were just somehow less. But that's the first reason. The second reason is what we talked about. He saw them release the fish. Good, our good old boy, Robert, he has a hunger. He has a hunger for those tasty trout. And he does occasionally take one and slip it into his creel. And that's a big no-no if you're, you know, a fly fisherman. It's all hashtag catch and release. You know what I'm saying? If you're not hashtagging it, you're not actually catching and releasing it. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're slamming them off of reds and snagging them in the tail but if you throw that hashtag catch and release in there dude you're a real angler i mean real angler <laughs> totally kidding be completely ethical with the fish don't fish off of reds don't snag fish handle them with care if you're going to catch and release you know if you're going to you're going to throw that hashtag catch and release on there don't throw your fingers up in its gills um if you are going to keep a fish you know you got nothing against that you know you got lo there's laws saying that you can take these fish it's a resource that's available for you. Just take it, respect it, eat that fish, actually use it. You know, if you put that fish to use, you know, personally, I have no issues. Some people will have issues, but I personally have no issues if you're going to take that fish and use it uh, the way God intended it, you know, as a resource. So this is super funny. This chapter, this whole book has really made me laugh. It's really, it's really good. And it's allowed me to reflect on some of the fishing stories of, of my youth and, uh, just some good laughs and it's been super cold outside. It's not think it's 14 degrees right now. And this is the warmest it's been in like 10 days. And uh, it's just been good to kind of join Robert, you know, in this book and kind of be out on the water with him, even though I'm in here at my desk or on the chair reading or whatever. So that's going to do it for this book club guys. If you did enjoy, let me know, comment, you know, link to the book is always in the description. If you want to purchase this yourself, uh, I did hear there is a good bit of snow coming into the Northeast. So maybe you need to be booked up for this storm. So you never know. But we will see you guys in the next one. Tight lines, y'all.